our report on that story. And M.A. is tapping into a great story this morning in Minneapolis. Yes, history is going to be made tonight when the Grain Belt recipe is transferred to its new home in New Ulm. But we figured we'd look back on some other history like Grain Belt memorabilia. That is coming up on Fox 9 News. Don't you go anywhere. Last call. All right, thanks, Pete. 7.53 now. For 84 years, the Grain Belt Brewery operated in northeast Minneapolis, brewing up the working man champagne, as we've heard it called. The brand was in danger of disappearing until this past July when, oh, hello, ah, uh, when Shell Brewing Company in New Ulm bought it. Today, the Grain Belt recipe is officially being transferred to a New Ulm, uh, to a New Ulm, and M.A. Roscoe is celebrating. You can see that along with uh, lots of other Grain Belt fans. Now, we're going to look at some memorabilia right now because tonight there's a moving party where the recipe gets taken down to New Ulm. We're standing in what used to be the bottling plant, and uh, appropriately enough, that's some accordion. Did I mention that? Every day is good that starts out with accordion. Joining me now is Jeff Lonto, and he wrote the book on Grain Belt. He's a Grain Belt historian. That's him. And I just have to point out this one advertisement from 1910 for Golden Grain Belt Beer. Good beer is a healthful builder of tissues wasted by exertion. It's sort of a health food, if you will. I think wasted might be the uh, operative word, but that's a whole nother matter. Jeff was good enough to bring some of his collection of Grain Belt memorabilia here today. And let's start out by taking a look. Jeff, come on in here. Tell us about that can right there. Well, that was uh, one of the first Grain Belt cans uh, from the mid-1930s. It was a cap steel can. It opened like a bottle. Uh, the beer can collectors tend to refer to them as cone tops. Cone tops. How much is that worth, do you think? Well, it depends on the condition, who's uh, selling it, but I've seen them go from between $50 and $150. Wow. Here's one for if you're having more than one or having more than five. Well, that's the picnic bottle. Correct. And it was an unpasteurized beer was in that bottle, uh, and so it had to be kept refrigerated. But back in the 30s, when people were more likely to go on picnics on Sunday, they'd uh, bring bring a bottle like that uh, and serve everybody with it. Family pack, if you will. Uh, let's talk about this one's very old. When is that? What what? When does that bottle date to? Okay, that dates to the uh, turn of the century. It's an older bottle. You can see it's a little dirty there. But if you flip it around uh, to this side, you see a label. Uh, uh, referencing the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906, which there is a requirement that uh, after that act was passed for two years, between 1906 and 1908, they had to have that label. Okay, let's move on to some of the paper items here. There are some real characters there. What are their names? Stanley and Albert. And Stanley was the little guy with the glasses, and Albert was the, uh, the big lug who had the deep voice in the old commercials. These guys were actually on TV shilling for Grain Belt, uh, which would be kind of odd nowadays. Well, back in the 50s, there were a lot of cartoon spots. You had the Ham's Bear and all these the Peels beer mm -hmm. guys. And uh, so, uh, you know, that was it was a way to uh, do television, uh, and, you know, to make a, a, an appearance. Right. T briefly, tell us how much this cup is worth with Stanley and Albert. That Stanley and Albert cup uh, that can go anywhere from uh, 10 to $25 by uh, the people who specialize in selling that stuff. Right. So I shouldn't just toss this out. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, very, very nice. Thank you very much, Jeff. Tonight, collectors will be here with much more memorabilia than this, buying and selling. And uh, we're, we're just here to give you a little preview. And coming up, we're going to talk to the new owners of the Grain Belt brand. Back to you. Same? Quickly. Very cool. M.A. Roscoe all morning long has been talking about Grain Belt. You know, they're transferring the recipe down to New Ulm today, the Shell Brewery. So we have Grain Belt trivia. I say again, the best sign of all time. Here's your Grain Belt trivia for today. On the famous Grain Belt TV commercials and as well print ad commercials, who were the two cartoon characters? Were they Mike and Eric, Jeff and Tim, Alex and Mary, or... Albert and Stanley, 952-946-1234. The number to call Town Theaters is waiting by for your phone call. Gift certificate to Denny's this morning, Alex. And if you were watching M.A. a, a few moments ago, you would have, if you were paying attention, you would know. Absolutely. It is a marriage made in a heaven where there is beer, and we can drink it here tonight. The recipe for Grain Belt is being transferred to its new owners in New Ulm. We'll have the details coming up on Fox 9 News. A little accordion to start your day. Some clouds. Okay, all morning long, M.A. Roscoe 
has been at the old Grain Belt Brewery in Northeast Minneapolis. Yep, yep, yep. They're transferring um, the uh, recipe for Grain Belt beer down to New Ulm the Shell Brewery today. So MA has been filling us in all morning long. Well, we wanted to do some Grain Belt trivia. Why not? So here's the question that we had for today, and that is, on the famous Grain Belt television and print ad commercials, who were the two cartoon characters? Was it Mike and Eric, Jeff and Tim, Alex and Mary, or Albert and Stanley? Alex, you got a guess at that? I'm going to say Albert and Stanley. You sure it's not Alex and Mary? You know, some days. Nah. Alex Albert and, and Stanley, you're right on the money. You know what's going on. You grew up here. Uh, Angel Whelan and uh, Hampton. Well, Hampton. Joel Hampton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the winner for today wins that uh, <laughs> lovely uh, Denny's gift certificate for a little chow. Maybe a breakfast. Maybe one of those big cluster breakfasts. They have. Well, Alex, you know, I was shocked enough that we got to say Jackass the movie on TV today. Well, you know what I'm going to say now? Bung. This is a bung. And that's a bung hole. No, it really is. It's part of a keg. Now, why is the Grain Belt recipe going in this keg and being sent down to New Ulm? We'll tell you coming up on Fox 9 News. They're going to seal it up just like this. There. You know, it's an unusual moving party, to say the very least. Complete with oompa bands and steins full of... Grain Belt. Notch. Today, the Grain Belt beer recipe officially moving to its new home, the Shell Brewing Company of New Ulm. Oddly enough, M.A. Roscoe is more than uh, happy, of course, to roll up her sleeves and help out with this move. Yeah. Mike, uh, news flash for you. Guess who's the official meteorologist of the Grain Belt moving party? Got to be me. That would be you. Yeah. This just in from the Martys. It's yeah. official. Mike Chalinas, yeah. official meteorologist for the indoor beer party, which I think is perfect considering there will be beer consumption. It's, you know, it's sad that it, it's moving. It's sad that it's moving, M.A., but we're keeping it in yeah. the state. That's mm -hmm. the important thing. Okay. You know what? You know, Chef Andrew had duck or something. Yeah. And this is gizzards. Gizzards. Mm -hmm. I'm eating some gizzards this morning. Mm -mm, that's good eating. Take and a good bite. No, it's okay. It's a big enough bite. And the reason we're showing you gizzards and some other salty bar foods is a little bit of history for you. This is the kind of stuff they would serve at the bar, 30s, 40s, 50s, even up to till day. And Jody Marty of Shell Brewing, tell us, um, tell us about salt. Salt was also a key component, not for the food, but for the beer. Why? Right. Uh, a lot of the older people didn't like it, the bitterness in the beer, so they'd always have salt shakers on the bar. And what they would do is they'd salt the top of it, and the beer would foam up, and that would kind of take the bitterness away from it. So whenever you see a salt shaker at a bar, that's usually what it's there for. And there's still people that do it today. Yeah. Uh, you don't need salt for the Shells brand. It's that smooth and delicious. We visited the New Ulm Brewery, home of August Shell, back a couple years ago. And that is now the new home of Grain Belt. People are very, very excited that it is staying in Minnesota. You'll still be able to drink it. And uh, that's, that's Ted and I doing a little research at the bar. Just, it, it, this is purely research for the customer, for our viewer. And there's, there's beautiful New Ulm. I'm joined now by Ted Marty one of the owners, he and his wife, and you're holding the recipe. Now, what's going to happen tonight? This is a private party tonight at the old Grain Belt Brewery in Northeast Minneapolis. Uh, so what's going to happen? Tonight, we are obviously having a great little party here, and we are going to put the recipe inside this keg. Through, through what? Through the bunghole. <laughs> Maybe say it. Yep. And we're going to bung it up, and we're going to take it down to New Ulm. We're preserving the recipe, and we're going to bring it out down in New Ulm just the way it was up here. And th and that makes Shell the largest brewery in Minnesota. In Minnesota. The largest brewer in Minnesota, and we are the second oldest family-owned brewery in the country. Now, I think something of concern to Grain Belt lovers like Mike Chalinas, will it taste the same? Can it possibly taste exactly the same when it's made in a new brewery? Well, we have uh, over 142 years of experience, and we're going to try our best to make it exactly the same. Uh, we're obviously dealing with uh, different brewery and different water, uh, but we're going to do our best to make it the same. And frankly, after the fifth one, yeah, who can tell, right? <laughs> That's a little joke. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's it from the old Summit Brewery. Uh, Summit. Did I say Summit? <laughs> no. <laughs> brewery. Oh, that's okay. And uh, you'll be able to see gifts from today oh. and memorabilia from yesteryear. Back to you, Mike, the official meteorologist of Absolutely. the Grain Belt Moving Look what Party. I'm this is um, from one of our engineers, Dick Sigurdsson. This is a, a Grain Belt tray from 1971 that he bought at the brewery. 
How about that? Ooh. Top notch. A little 3D work in there. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't take down the Grain Belt Brewery sign. That is for sure. Got to keep the sign up on that. Uh, Hennepin Avenue and the bridge there. Yeah, uh, I'm really glad that I'm doing the Grain Belt story today because this, this may very well be my last beer. And I'll tell you why. On Monday, I'm going to be live at Underwater Adventure at the Mall of America. I'm going to be handcuffed to an escape artist named Carl Achilles. And we're going to be thrown in the shark tank, the shark tank underwater, and you will see us escape live. And let's just say failure is not an option. That is going to be live <laughs> on our air. Well, wow. I, no, you're not jackass. an option. Did I just put myself in Jackass the movie? I don't know. I think you did. Yeah. I don't know. No, no. Yeah. All right. Well, that does it for us. Go out and have yourself a yeah, great have a weekend. Great weekend.